colleges, please don't anybody, if you get an email from Kathleen Shepard, open it under any circumstances. Hello. Hello, Kathleen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, volunteer events. Volunteers are still needed for uh, Calgary and Edmonton Gala. If you would like to volunteer for the gala in Calgary, which is on October 14th, please talk to Kaylee or Donna. If you would like to volunteer for the gala in Edmonton, November 2nd, contact Nova. And Kathleen is going to come up and make an announcement. Um, we have a new series on social media called A Closer Look. Um, you guys may have seen it. Um, if you don't follow us on social media, we have um, Facebook, we have Twitter, and we have Instagram for all three cities. So sign up and you can watch our new series. Um, it's got uh, Steve, it's got Byron, it's got Dean, and then some team participants and some volunteers. So that's going to be happening in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. No, that was very good, actually. Nice job. Also on October 12th, Zurich, as you know, Zurich is an insurance company, and they, uh, uh, they support us uh, in very extensive ways. And so one of the things we've worked with them on is for them to do some training for customer service. And so that's going to be a lunch and learn. It's going to take place on October 12th. It's going to involve <laughs> all kinds of technology and, and things like that. So we'll make sure you've got better announcements coming out very quickly. But on October 12th, uh, they will be doing customer service training for us. And so if you have teams or you need that, uh, I worked with them quite a bit this summer on it. it, it it's pretty good. So we're looking forward to that. Um, social media, we're going to learn to that. Social media, anything else? Okay, we're good. So one of the things that we did a few weeks back, oh, I know what I forgot to mention. Employment is at 22 jobs for the month, and so they deserve a round of applause if that's significant. But even more significant is between property management and housing and devs team, they have 200 people in the building as of yesterday, I believe. So let's give them a round of applause. So several, a couple months ago, we did, uh, Edmonton is involved. They're doing a, a cleaning of the church thing today. But we got Red Deer, we got the shelter, we got here downtown. And we did a kind of a testimony thing. This is probably, I don't know, two, three months ago. And the idea was people who were working frontline had the opportunity to talk about, you know, how uh, relevant it was for them to be able to be here to work and, and respect the call of God in their life. And then I thought, how about we give people that are a little bit more in the background an opportunity to share what, what it means to them. And so we've got Laura today from Red Deer, and she's going to be first. And then we're going to go Bertha from uh, the shelter. And then we're going to go my good buddy Dylan. And uh, so... Let's give them a little round of applause as well. There you go. And Laura, you're up. Okay, can you guys hear me all right? Okay, I got some thumbs up. Perfect. So as I was preparing, I wished that I would have one really neat story to share, but I, I couldn't think of anything. And I really feel like I'm called to be here for the small moments. So I'm going to start off by saying that Red Deer seems like it's a bit of an anomaly. Yeah, just the way that our building is structured and the size of our staff, I feel like I have a chance to be not just behind the scenes. I know a number of our guests and our volunteers by name. I get to interact with the people that come and fix the phone. Right now, we've got people cleaning in our dining hall and installing air conditioning. I get a chat with the RCMP, different neighbors, et cetera, et cetera. And I love it. God has called me to the mustard seed red deer for such a time as this. Matthew 22, verses 36 to 40, loosely, because I'm going to be reading out of the message, says, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. This is the most important, the first on any list. But there is a second to set alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. So it became very clear to me after I had been here for a few months. I started out as part-time, and that in itself is a story of God calling me to the mustard seed, the way that that worked out. Then somehow Byron convinced me to work almost full-time, and that really coincided, the time that I actually started to work full-time hours coincided with 
um, significant personal and work-related struggles for a number of our staff, and I really felt like they were things that threatened to derail the good work that we were trying to do here in Red Deer. And I know that God called me to be here to help to bridge that gap and to care deeply for our staff and to support them through those different struggles and through that time. Uh, I love the sidewalk version of the Mustard Seeds vision and mission to build community, to grow hope, and to support change. Words that are very familiar to all of us. And I really try to extend that to our staff here um, in Red Deer. So a house divided against itself will fall, but if we can grow community with one another by caring enough to learn people's spouses' names or their kids' names or remembering birthdays, um, we can grow hope by sharing our struggles and our joys with one another because we all know that day to day in the, the different things that we find ourselves in, there are struggles and there are joys and there are ways that we can encourage and support one another uh, by just being honest and open about those struggles and joys. Mm. We can support change by giving one another a safe place to grow, the grace to make mistakes, and an underlying understanding that we're all in this together. And I think that if we can do that, big things are going to happen here. God's going to turn the lights on and he's going to hear us and answer us when we pray. And I believe that in small ways I'm here to help make that happen. So really God has called me to be here at the Mustard Seed Red Deer to share the gifts that he has given me. To advance his kingdom by loving him with all of my passion, all my prayer and all my intelligence. And by deeply loving others. And I believe that that's a call that's placed on all of us. So I'm also here because a number of years ago, I was a part of a faith community that studied Isaiah 58. And I'm just going to read that again out of the message. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just parts of it. So what I'm interested in seeing you do is sharing your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your homes, putting clothes on the shivering ill-clad, being available to your own families. Do this and the lights will turn on and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then when you pray, God will answer. You'll call out for help and I'll say, here I am. So if you get rid of unfair practices, if you quit blaming victims, if you quit gossiping about other people's sins, if you're generous with the hungry and start giving yourselves to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadowed lives will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. I'll give you a life full in the emptiest of places, firm muscles, strong bones. You'll be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You'll use the old rubble of past lives to build anew, rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything, restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate. Make the community livable again. So I want that. I want God to turn the lights on in my life, um, to hear me when I pray, and I want God to turn the lights on here in the mustard seed and to hear us when we pray. And this gets to be my job. I don't have to try and figure out ways that I can make that happen in the hours outside of work. I get to do this on a daily basis. So while I might not personally be the one that gets to give clothes to the shivering ill-clad, I might be the person who gets to answer the phone when someone's calling to ask about our donation hours. I am someone who gets to enter invoices so that our bills get paid and the lights stay on here. I get to be a part of God's work at the Mustard Seed Red Deer in many small ways. So I see myself as being here for the small day-to-day -day, seemingly insignificant moments that combined contribute to something greater than myself. So I see that as a high calling and as a practical day-to-day -day way that I can live out my faith. And I'm proud to be a part of the Mustard Seed and I'm excited to continue God's good work here. Mm. Thank you.
so cool. Um, my buddy Bertha, who I beat in fantasy football two weeks ago. <laughs> that doesn't count, though. Uh, all right. <laughs> so can you guys hear me? Yes? Okay, perfect. So as Bill said, I'm Bertha, and I'm the administrative assistant here at the shelter. And I've been working here for about a year and a half. So I just kind of want to give a little bit of background um, to when I started working here. Um, so I moved here from Ottawa about two and a half years ago. Um, and I really felt God was calling me to Calgary. And I kind of didn't have anything for myself here. I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything. And it was in the middle of the economic downturn, I guess. And so... Um, I just came. A lot of people said it was a really bad idea, but um, yeah, I ended up coming. So six months into me being here in Calgary, I was working this job that I absolutely didn't like, and I and I knew God had told me or given me the go-ahead to be here, but nothing really showed, and there was no um, promise, and it wasn't really coming to that. And so I was really frustrated, and I wanted to quit that job, but he told me to stay. And so I kind of did, very just angry and frustrated in, in it as well. And after a while, he kind of gave me the go-ahead um, that I'd be, you know, like, it's okay to move on, it's okay to leave. And so I quit that job, and people still thought I was, um, it wasn't the smartest move because, once again, the economy wasn't great, and I'd had this job, and then I quit it, and I didn't have anything else lined up. Um, but after a while, I did start working at the Mustard Seed. Um, and so my background is in human rights and women and gender studies. And so I've always had a passion for people and helping people. Um, I thought I would be more um, frontline just because in like everything else that I've been volunteering in, I was very frontline as well. But um, I did have experience in um, administration and administrative assistance. So when I started working here, it really was the beginning of God's promise in Calgary um, to me. And I really like working here. And um, when people ask me, you know, what's the best part about working at the Seed? One of the things that I definitely say is the community. Um, and I feel like here at the shelter, we have a great community, and even at the Seed as a whole. But we have things like staff appreciation, which just happened. And it was just such a great opportunity for people to, to just hang out with each other and enjoy each other, as well as, like, meeting each other's families. So it wasn't, you know, there wasn't... Um, necessarily anything um, that it was for. It was just the chance to really enjoy enjoy each other. And I think um, being in the back, in the back offices, really allows me to see things um, in a bird's eye view almost um, and really encourage um, certain staff. And Because when they're really in situations, it's hard for them to say, I did this well or this happened well. But to really be outside of situations and be like, you know what, you did great to, you, you did great with that. The way you talked to that guest, the way you helped that guest um, was really incredible. And so I, I feel blessed to be able to, to pour into the staff and not um, necessarily, even though I'm not necessarily client facing. And so I wanted to read this verse. Um, I spoke on it when I did the Lunch and Learn, but I think God's really um, continues to bring this verse up as I keep working here. So it's from 1 Corinthians 12, verse 25 and 26, and it's from the Message Version. And it says, the way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church, every part dependent on every other part. The parts we mention and the parts we don't, the parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. And so we're all a part of the mustard seed body of Christ, whether it's frontline staff, whether it's HR, whether it's finance, and all of these parts work together to really keep us running um, efficiently. And we, we wouldn't be able to do what we do here if we, if one part wasn't working the best or if it wasn't working efficiently. And so frontline is so admirable, and it's so admirable to be frontline and, and client-facing, but to be honest, we all can't be frontline. I think it would be a little bit of a mess, actually. 
Um, so when we all do our jobs and when we all stay in our lanes, um, we really serve our population as a whole. And it's also, it's important to always keep the vision at the forefront. And if you keep the vision, then you're able to do what you're doing, whether it's um, writing stats, whether it's calling volunteers. At the forefront, it's people that are that are at the forefront of it. And so when you have that vision, when you have our vision in mind, you're able to do whatever it is, whether it seems minuscule or not, you're able to do it efficiently and you're able to do it um, with a heart that that is just knowing that it's coming out of a place where you're serving people. And so the last thing that I wanted um, to say, I think God's been really speaking to me um, about with people that aren't necessarily client-facing is even though we're all not client-facing, we're all client-serving. And I think that's something just really important to um, realize and remember um, whatever department that you're in. That was excellent. Um, Dylan's up next, and Dylan is a young man that, uh, oh, by the way, uh, Bertha, I just sent you a trade offer. Okay? We're in the same fantasy football league. Uh, Dylan's a young man that I've known for a long time, and uh, uh, he works over in the HR department. We all know him. And uh, I can remember for a long time going or thinking, how do I get Dylan to come work in one of my departments? Because such a talented, gifted young man. But Dylan is a gift to us, thank God. Technically, yeah, thank you. <laughs> he didn't stay though, he went over to HR. So we, uh, um, so I really wanted to, I wanted to find somebody from HR that could come and talk this morning. Dylan was the guy, and so let's give him a big round of applause. Hey everyone, thanks, Bill, and thanks, Laura and Bertha. That was great. Um, it is my great privilege and honor to share today. Um, and uh, as Bill said, my name is Dylan Squires, and I've been working here at the Mustard Seed as an administrative assistant in HR since March of this year. I grew up in a small farming community near Grand Prairie, Alberta, with three older brothers, an amazing dad and mom who love each other, love us, and love God. I had a very safe upbringing. <clears throat> but as I grew up, I started becoming more exposed to the world around me. And when I moved to Calgary six years ago, I attended Ambrose University, where I crammed a four-year program in five years, I that one. Uh, studying behavioral science and volleyball. I did my best to embody a balanced student-athlete journey of pursuing excellence to the best of my knowledge. Following my years at Ambrose, I married the most wonderful woman I have met, and we try our, our best uh, to live a life that honors God, each other, and the world we embrace around us. While at Ambrose, I studied behavioral science, as I noted, and which this, this discipline very basically tries to give insights into the considerations necessary when attempting to answer the question of why people do what they do, Primary, primarily employing the disciplines of sociology and psychology. I learned a great deal and opened my mind to consider it various ways of knowing. I also focused on poverty studies when I was able and took a couple classes with our very own John Ruck. These courses stretched and applied my critical thinking skills as we considered together as a class the complexities of poverty and homelessness, and deepened in, and this deepened in me a hunger for shalom. Since this could be a long talk about my journey and my studies while at Ambrose, I find two points of interest um, to be sufficient today when thinking about the question that Bill has given to me, how come I work at the mustard seed? Because I think each of these two key learnings, which I'll unpack during this time, are expandable to a broad-reaching application in my life, and hopefully will resonate with you as well. The first is found in Romans 1, 16 to 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith. As it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. Let me just back up and reread this uh, using a different uh, translation of the word faith. For in it, the gospel, it is the righteousness of God revealed through faithfulness for faithfulness. 
As it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faithfulness. J.D. Hunter, in his 2010 essay, defines uh, a concept of faithful presence. Some of you may be aware of this article, whereby he outlines Jesus' faithfulness to us for our faithfulness in response to him. The word became flesh. The faithful presence of Jesus here on earth with us is nothing short of awesome. It elicits a response of faithfulness in return, and with this in mind, I think this term outlines my deep desire to be faithfully present here as I steward the time and life and occupation God has given me. Being absent is easy in a world of technology, consumerism, entitlement, pride, individualism, tribalism, and so on. But by being present and faithfully so, we respond to the promptings of the Spirit within us to bring shalom and partner with Jesus in his redemptive plan for the world. The second learning I would like to touch on came to me last year as I sought vocational stepping stones. As I sought the help of God and significant people in my life to discern my calling, I was challenged and graced by the writings of the president at Ambrose University currently, Dr. Gordon T. Smith. He opens his book, Courage and Calling, with a quote from Frederick Buechner. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Smith goes on to unpack the various kinds of callings we encounter within our lives, be it occupational, geographical, spiritual, relational, or any other calling or prompting of God's on our life, some of which we are each called to. He also breaks down the distinction between secular and sacred work and argues that we are co-workers with Christ in all we do and that our work, our various vocations, are opportunities to respond to God and to fan into flame the gift of God as found in Timothy. As we are made to glorify him, Smith expands Buchner's quote uh, to ask these questions. What are my gifts and abilities? What brings me deep joy or what is the deep desire of my heart? Where do I personally sense the world's brokenness or, and hunger? And what is uh, my unique temperament and personality? These four questions help us consider our calling and who God has made us to be in the world. It is my hope that these two themes, faithful presence and calling, resonate with you and that you can see how they naturally coincide. I have been challenged over the years to embrace a concept of faithful presence, responding to Jesus, who is the ultimate model of faithfulness to us in his incarnation and in his sending his spirit to direct us. And I have also been challenged to seek out why God has made me the way he has, how the passions and skill set he has given me have led me to where I am and where I'm going. I deeply resonate with the vision, mission, and the values of, of the mustard seed. I love the work we do here. I am proud to say that I am a part of it. As my skill set increases in HR, I en enjoy increasingly uh, what HR brings to the table here at the mustard seed. Hunter notes in his article that even if our tasks in the world do not have ultimate significance, that does not mean that the tasks we perform have no spiritual significance. Although each task I complete may not directly impact the life of a guest or a client, I know that my best work for the Lord um, is, is best done for him and not for the praise of man. I believe God has called me here, and I am stoked to be here. I'll leave you with these questions. What are you called to today? And will you withstand the temptation to be fleetingly absent? And will you respond with courage to be faithfully present? Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Um, I, I love, I think, well, I know I love, <laughs> the, the service that you know, everyone can express, right? That it's it's not just, I think it was like a common theme, it was the faithfulness and the calling that was on your life, and then the willingness and the deep desire to serve. And I think you can find that in any position throughout the muscle. But you know, thank you guys for uh, preparing today. Uh, I'm just going to close in a word of prayer, and then we're ready to go. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you so much for the people of this organization, for the people who uh, give of their time, their energy, their talent, uh, their life, to be here and to serve our guests. Um, pray, Father, that you would keep, keep giving us the courage that we need to serve, that you would uh, help us to find renewal in the work that we do, uh, and that you give us time to rest. Too. Uh, but be with us, be with our guests today, uh, work in their hearts, uh, bring them to us, ready to
changed when you reconciled and brought praise to you. Amen. Have a good day.